today we're going to talk about React Native CLI and actually more about React Native community. Uh, so um, I'm interested in uh, how many of you are um, somewhat experienced with React Native, like did any React Native app or Expo app? Yeah, so quite a bunch, uh, but not everyone. So um, this talk may not be so interesting to you uh, if, if you're not into React Native. I'm not going into some specifics. I'm obviously talking about some interesting stuff, but uh, this, is, this is talk about uh, history um, in, uh, of uh, React Native community. Um, so yeah, I'll try to make it as approachable for you as, as possible. So first things first, I'm uh, Michal Pierzchawa. Uh, you can find me under this Daimaiki handle uh, on Twitter and, uh, and GitHub. And uh, yeah, I work as a developer at Callstack uh, where we do React Native consultancy. Uh, and after hours, I maintain Jest and I'm a contributor to React Native community. So uh, what about community takeover, huh? Uh, what about it? So let's start with the beginning. As I said, uh, we're gonna go through some some history. So in November 2018, uh, Hector Ramos, this this guy here, with this, oh, you can actually see this this logo here. Um, he he's a uh, React Native manager at Facebook, and he published a blog post in November about open source roadmap for React Native. And uh, it was a continuation uh, to the Sophie Alpert article about state of uh, React Native uh, in June 2018. And uh, it was, it's this article. And uh, here's where we learned that Facebook is actually working on rewriting um, React Native to new architecture, which is synchronous. Uh, because as we said, uh, as um, uh, as Naomi said, um, communication comes through the bridge in React Native, but that's about to change uh, in uh, in upcoming months or years. Uh, so, uh, and as many of us remember, if you're into React Native for at least a couple of months, that five days after this talk, still in June, uh, Airbnb announced sunsetting React Native. So, yeah, that that was that was bad experience. Um, but hey, um, then again, in November, Hector published um, Hector's, uh, Hector's post uh, discusses the uh, future of React Native as a fully fledged um, open source project and uh, what it means. It has healthy repository, a stable public API, living ecosystem, and great docs. Uh, and one of the key points of the of this post is this weird thing called Lean Core. Uh, and what is it? In short, this is about reducing the surface of React Native Core. So it's not like Adam just said to make uh, React Native greater. It's uh, actually about making React Native smaller. Uh, so what about it? Three months later, um, Christoph Nakazawa, known as uh, Sipoyer, um, or this guy who uh, made Jest a pretty good test runner, uh, currently, he's an uh, engineer manager um, for React Native project at Facebook, and he publishes a publishes a GitHub issue about with this long list. It's it's not here, but believe me, it's, it was really long uh, list of the modules to be deprecated and removed from React Native Core to some other place to uh, to be passed to the community. So there are two goals, make React Native smaller, like the core of React Native smaller, so it's more portable and it's more as a building block for libraries and apps, and speed up the development uh, of native modules, which is slow uh, because of how um, the React Native repository works, uh, because it syncs with um, Facebook monorepo, which is a weird thing, and um, and yeah, we have to live with that. So um, what we want is to extract some modules, uh, but where do we put them? Uh, we put them in a GitHub repository and under NPM uh, organization, obviously. And it happened that there is such an organization. It's called React Native Community. 
And so we're actually in the middle of migrating, of moving like a lot of React Native code into community packages. So uh, this is a small off topic. Uh, a month after this post, we uh, met uh, with some folks from the community at Facebook London headquarters uh, to hack on React Native and Jest. Uh, and we closed around 200 issues. Um, and for example, create a proof of concept of automatic linking for the CLI, uh, which I'm gonna tell about soon. Uh, but yeah, let's let's go back. It was pretty cool. So it's nice from Facebook side that they organized those um, those summits. It's not the first time. Uh, it's the first time for React Native, but we met with just folks uh, last year. So React Native community. This is a organization uh, on GitHub that gathers some more popular uh, packages like Web, WebView, NetInfo, uh, or even Airbnb's um, React Native Maps. So we try to also publish those um, those modules. It's it's a pretty pretty lengthy list. There's like 60 plus repositories. Uh, we try to make them high quality. Um, and unify the development and maintenance. So we also try to publish them, publish them on under the the same npm organization for uh, so you can easily distinguish like high high quality React Native package uh, of like unknown quality React Native package. So okay, uh, let's start with the lean core. When did it happen? So it so it happened around um, around the October. 2018, and one of the first, uh, or actually the first native component that was uh, provided to the community was WebView. And uh, Thibault, the maintainer of uh, React Native WebView, says something about slimming this weird thing. Um, but there's no such word, so um, we have to we had to come up with some some other one. So we actually changed the slimming to lean core. Oh well. Um, and since October, uh, React Native WebView closed like 150 plus pull requests, closed 200 issues, uh, released a lot of functionalities, and fixed even more bugs. So, um, what we have today for React Native WebView as a community package is that they, um, it has two core contributors. Um, it's uh, Tivo and, and Jamin. And in eight months, they were able to uh, merge, as I just said, those numbers may be different now, but I, I think I, I checked them today. So they, they merged a lot of full requests, closed a lot of issues, and released even more, or oh, maybe not even more, right? <laughs> 80 is not bigger than 250, but anyway, they released a lot of versions, uh, and they have like um, a lot of improvements. So, Okay, I'm talking about this uh, community uh, and some some weird React Native history, uh, but what about the what about the CLI? Just give me a. Uh, there it is. Uh, it's also a community packages package. You can see. You can see that it's under the React Native community uh, repository. And uh, if you used React Native even once, you also used React Native CLI. Uh, even if you use Expo, it uses CLI under the hood. So the CLI is, is loved, loved and it's hated at the same time. And, and uh, we want to fix this bad part. We want the CLI to shine, to be loved by everyone or almost everyone. Uh, and this is in fact the first, um, the first module that was extracted from the, uh, from the React Native core, but it's not a native component, it's just a CLI, a bunch of JS node code. Um, so um, a couple of months after this ex extraction, um, this repository quickly gained uh, two, two core contributors. Uh, which is uh, me and Casper should be somewhere here, um, and uh, and there it is. This is the the extraction point. You can see it's September, not October. So it's 
it's faster than uh, than the uh, than the web view. And what happened to the CLI? In short, it got free core contributors, so pretty nice maintenance. And in eight months, we were able to close 200, uh, 260 pull requests, 130 ish, uh, issues, and release like almost 70 uh, versions. So the number, raw numbers are pretty boring. Um, so let's see how they perform, how they perform uh, compared to the before extraction period. So here it is. Here's, here's um, this, this, this funny chart that says, uh, this is the extraction point with, a, with an arrow and there is time before and after. Um, and you can almost clearly see that there is like a increase of quantity of comets. It's, a, it's comics per week, uh, comets per, per week. So uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of, a lot more going on in the, in the CLI code base. Um, and here's another view, uh, a bit longer, uh, since React Native was open source actually uh, in 2015. So you can see the diminishing trend of uh, interest in, in React. I don't have a pointer, but yeah, I hope you can see it. Um, in the interest for the uh, CLI, and then there is this extraction period, or after extraction period, and it spikes and tries to keep like a bigger number of comets um, per per week. So so yeah, we have we have a lot of comets uh, coming to the uh, to the CLI mostly from from these guys. And um, but is quantity uh, does the quantity makes the quality better as well? Um, in my opinion, yes. But let me let me tell you. Um, so now we're gonna talk about what's uh, what's new, what's fixed uh, in the in the CLI. So right after the mig migration uh, to the community repo, um, maybe not right after. It was quite some time in this this year in January. Um, so this is uh, one of the first meaningful um, outside. Um, uh, Contribution to the project. It's a speed up um, of the of the comments in initialization by ten times. So simply by compiling the source, because uh, believe me or not, um, CLI shipped with Babel register, and it was just compiling or transpiling your code um, on the fly. So by compiling the source, we're able 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 to. Um, drop the time to run the simplest command from two and a half second to 0 0.2. Uh, so yeah, pro tip, don't use by Babel uh, registering your projects, please. Um, unified logging is, is another one. Uh, and it's about improving the, having the better and consistent UX uh, with uh, nicer um, error messages, warnings, logger, like, log messages. So for example, we are slowly introducing verbose mode uh, for debugging, so you can pass the verbose flag and see what's going on under the hood. Uh, there's also a new upgrade command. Uh, it's still Git-based, uh, but um, this time it's maintained because uh, the React Native Git upgrade package is not maintained for like a year or almost two now. And it uses a great community project called uh, React Native Diff Perch, uh, which stores the diffs between React Native versions and between each and every React Native version. It's, it's, it's huge. So uh, the command, command tries to automate as much as possible. And in case of issues, it points to the manual upgrade helper. So this is, this is the um, RN Diff Perch project. Um, it's not actually used now because it evolves to something better, which is called React Native Upgrade Helper. And you can, uh, this, the screen is not, not of the higher co contrast, but it's very similar to the GitHub interface and it's customizable to the um, React Native needs. So, yeah, it's, it's really great. It's shipped just today uh, with the stable release of React Native 60. So 
go try it out if you need to upgrade the, any of the version of React Native. This is gonna help. Um, what else? Uh, documentation. So this is just a, just a bunch of docs, but this is very important uh, because uh, something like uh, documentation is something that uh, Mike Grabowski and Alexei uh, Karif, the creators of the RNPM, which is like a spin-off to the original CLI, um, forgot to, the, uh, to port to the React Native core when they migrated their co code inside. So only resources we had for, uh, to, con uh, to configure um, React Native uh, CLI was source code, obviously, and a bunch of articles on uh, Stack Overflow or blog posts. So now it's finally gathered in a single place. So if you're a library author, you can easily check how the thing's going. If you're a platform author or maintainer, you can also see how to configure stuff. And if you're a an user, you can get some information about commands um, and, and plugins and stuff like that, how it works. Um, we have also a new init command. Um, it's not that the old one is bad, we left it as a legacy init. Uh, so we have two nows. <laughs> two, two, yeah, two now. And um, the problem is that the, um, the, the old or the, the legacy init is actually separate, its code is separated between two packages one global package and one local package. So global is the React Native CLI that you install globally usually. Uh, and the second one is the is this repository, the, the local, so-called local CLI, the actual CLI. So it's, uh, it was very hard to develop um, uh, and test new features with this setup, so we decided to rewrite it to be, to be a regular command inside the, um, in the, inside the CLI. Um, and we also like we also like to get rid of the global React Native CLI package because we think it causes confusion. Confusion because you need to install it globally. Global stuff is bad. Um, and uh, and also the new command is easier uh, easier to um, to maintain and it's very flexible. So I'm not sure if you heard of uh, any templates. But template is, a, is a, a way to bootstrap your React Native code with some custom code. So I don't want to show you how it worked um, uh, prior to this in a, in a legacy in it because it was like a black magic. Uh, and, but we decided to fix it, make it that simple. All you have to do is create this template.config.js, point to where your template is, and we're going to copy this code, replace some some names and put it in your directory. So that's it. It's all the configuration. There's like a placeholder name, template there like for directory and you can run some script uh, after they in it. So there's a small, uh, small demo how it works. I'll use this to refill. You can see this nice React UI logo. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah, so uh, it happened. It it it, um, it takes a while. I I didn't slow down this uh, this GIF. Um, and yeah, so what we are doing, we are downloading the template. Template is like a default template lives inside React Native, so it's synced. It's always in sync. Uh, we copy the template. We process it. We execute some pass in its scripts, uh, pass the std out to, to the CLI, and we install required dependencies, uh, be it um, regular, no, like JS dependencies, or, or native ones, like uh, CocoaPods on iOS. And then we show this, this message, this is the same as in, in the legacy version, and that, that, that's it. You can use it with, uh, with NPX or with standalone of the React Native um, CLI. You don't, need to global, you don't need the global package to run it. Uh, and uh, I think last feature I want to talk about is auto-linking. And this is my favorite feature, uh, favorite improvement to the CLI and to the React Native workflow because it's going to change the um, it, it's going to simplify the way you add dependencies and manage dependencies in it's 
so much. Just it's it's just such a nice improvement. So what's auto linking? Um, it's uh, it's about automatically linking the um, native dependencies such as WebView or NetInfo or Reanimated during the install or build time. So the goal is to make the installation of the native package as easy as installing the Node package. So just npm install or yarn add, that's it. Without touching any platform specific files, which were very hard, like very, actually upgrading the native build files is one of the biggest um, issues with upgrading Ray Native to newer ver versions. So we wanted to get rid of that and uh, I think we, we finally uh, nailed it. So how it, uh, yeah, this, this was the um, double request for the iOS version. Uh, this is for the, for the Gradle on, uh, for Android. Um, we coded it during this uh, Reignative Summit uh, at London as a proof of concept. And for the last couple of months, we were polishing it because there is uh, so much work with this. Um, so how does, how does it work, actually? Um, the CLI analyzes your dependencies in your package JSON and reignative config.js. Uh, based on that, um, by, and by logic provided per platform like iOS, Android, or Windows, uh, the CLI is able to construct the JSON object with configuration. It uses this config command. It also has a bunch of stuff inside. It's smaller now. Um, and we can see um, this configuration by running running this 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 um, React Native config uh, command. It's uh, you can just just check it if you like, but you you probably don't need it. Uh, and uh, and this command is called by platform specific scripts uh, like by default on uh, by Gradle script on Android or CocoaPod script uh, on on iOS. And uh, and based on that config. They're able to generate linking configuration for our React project. So, um, for example, on Android, this is totally not visible. So, yeah. Just give me a second. Yeah, I have I have the code here. So let's let's go for the code. Uh, it's not so bad. Let's start with with Android. So we have uh, we have this native modules Gradle. It's a Gradle plugin, Gradle script. We import some stuff. We define the tem template uh, like a. We try to, gener to generate the package list Java file. It's gonna contain our like a stuff that we need for running Ray Native. Our package imports. They're gonna be generated and put here based on configuration, and then we register them in the main React package. Um, let's say it's it's almost that's it, uh, but and yeah, we do it uh, with where is this? Yeah, it doesn't matter. the The thing is that the, the most important thing is to is to get this this project generated and put it oh my oh yeah I, I can't see this it's green believe me but there's this like added like so we we are adding the package list and we call it in our main application Java uh, and you can see there is no like this is the place where you can add your custom packages if they don't work with auto-linking, uh, but most of the time you don't need to touch it. So, so that's great about it. Well, what about the uh, what about the iOS version? It's simpler. So you can see that uh, the um, iOS version calls the config command, it does it in the root directory, uh, reads the JSON, parse like checks the dependencies, and based on that. And on this pod, pod spec, pod spec is like a definition for, for iOS um, native project config. It creates the spec from the file, and the import, most important thing is this, like pod 
name of our dependency and file to the like path to the pod spec. That's it. That that makes uh, the Cocoa Pods know where our uh, native dependencies are, and it does its magic in the native workspace. So after we have the script, we need to run it somewhere. So on Android, we do it by applying the Gradle plugins, like applying native module settings Gradle. This is what I was looking for uh, inside the settings Gradle file. And another plugin here in the, uh, in the build Gradle. Yeah, it's called apply native modules app build Gradle, of course. Uh, and for, for iOS, uh, it's, it's a bit simpler because we only need uh, one call, so we require this, um, this lengthy name. It's import of our native module script. And we call this function, that's it. Now all of our native dependencies are linked because of this module and uh, this function call. So I'm gonna show you how this works. There's a small demo. So we have a diff. There's uh, an info added, but it's not linked. We are not touching native dependencies. And it obviously doesn't work now, right? So what we do, we install uh, CocoaPods dependencies. Yeah, it sees React. I use React Native 59 version because we can. Um, and then we run the um, a React Native run iOS command. It's gonna take a while. Yeah, the output is ugly. We need to change that. Uh, contributions were welcome. Uh, but seriously, it's, it's, it's a very simple change uh, I can guide, guide you. Um, so yeah, don't, uh, uh, don't be shy. Uh, you can ask. Yeah, yeah, it's it's doing its stuff, compiling, linking. Okay, it's done. Build succeeded, and we have connection info. So, NetInfo native package was added without any changes to the native uh, native files. Uh, and if if you, I think I, I didn't run the build in the in the video, uh, uh, the diff in the video. Uh, but the only thing that changes is the um, uh, the log file for the iOS native dependencies, which is which is okay. Log files can be regenerated, so that's great because there's no more link needed. And React Native link is one single most hated package, uh, most hated command in the React Native industry. So we're just slowly getting rid of it. We're not removing it. We just want to make it obsolete. So the highlights are that. Heading to an end, let's let's uh, let's let's just summarize this talk. Uh, it's uh, the most Im important parts are documentation, faster startup. Uh, we have end-to-end -end tests now, auto linking, new commands, and you can read, yeah. So uh, make sure you read it. The platform stuff is great because we're now. Now we are not special casing React Native uh, package for the iOS and, and, and Android. They're treated as any other uh, third party platform. So React Native Windows is a first party citizen right now, which is cool. Um, and this is Alexi Grief, uh, one of the creative creators of the <coughs> link command <laughs> and plugins to the React Native uh, CLI. So he says uh, some nice things about uh, um, some already improved things uh, like the UI speed, etc. Um, he probably doesn't know that we remove, removed like half of his code. So, oops, sorry, sorry, Alexi. And uh, news from today: uh, React Native 060 is out, stable release. Uh, we already um, were able to send a patch to the CLI to fix some stuff that we broke in the stable release. But we can do it. The, the great thing about extracting um, some of the React Native packages outside of the core is that we can upgrade them without upgrading React Native, which is great. It comes with uh, Android X. This is going to be a pain in the ass, sorry. Uh, but we have a script to, uh, to mitigate the migration. Um, CocoaBots in integration by default and, and auto-linking. Those are like the, the biggest changes and they're gonna 
break stuff. So go try it out. You can try the standalone CLI of Yarn Art, React Native CLI, uh, at next, or just a, it's, now it's stable. Sorry, forgot to change that. And, or uh, NPX React Native init, my app. It's gonna use this new init. Uh, so as you can see, NPX ships by default with Node and NPM. Um, so you already have it if you have Node installed. Um, and if you don't, what, what do you do? Oh no. Yeah. Switching off and on works as always. Uh, so thank you. Uh, you can find me on this, under this handle on Twitter and on GitHub. Uh, make sure to follow me if you like this talk. If not, sorry about that. Uh, I tried. And, uh, and we have like extra message for you. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> That, 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 that's it. And the second thing, uh, Q&A panel. So we have skipped the questions uh, for each and every speaker we had in uh, favor of a, let's say, Q&A panel with a React Native specialists. That would be us, let's say. Uh, so if you have any questions regarding React Native in general, uh, not only the thoughts made by uh, Nomi or Michal, you can ask us uh, and we will try to answer those. They can be involving, uh, as I said, the thoughts that we had before, but they can uh, involve and touch anything in particular that you have uh, issues with React Native. Maybe you have some problems in your uh, current project, or maybe you are thinking about switching to React Native from, I don't know, Flutter, native developer, or Kotlin, or something like that. Uh, we will be glad to help you. So, uh, and as an incentive, we have some cool swag for you and maybe some more rewards, we'll see. So, if there are any questions, hands up and we'll try to help you. So, I have a question to uh, okay. Michal. Um, regarding to React Native uh, upgrade helper, uh, so you already said that you've got some migra migration scripts to 0 0.60. So do you plan to merge this React Native upgrade helper with some migration scripts so I can upgrade easily from 0.59 to 0.60? Uh, so yeah, uh, the, as I said, uh, you, can, you can use the CLI as a standalone. So. Uh, so you can uh, use the old code, like the version 1x, uh, which ships with the React Native uh, 59, uh, or, or with the 2x, um, which just shipped today. Uh, and you can upgrade uh, using, because there is this, this new upgrade too, and it actually, it, it's, it's already there in the uh, 59 version. So uh, we ported some of the important stuff into this version from the v2 to 1x, so we got you covered. Uh, but you need to, um, like manually upgrade the, the CLI for, uh, inside your project, so it's on the latest version, it's 1.10 right now, um, on the 1x branch, uh, or just use a standalone, like npx react native CLI, uh, react native community slash CLI, uh, and upgrade something. You're gonna use the latest code then, and you can use it in any, any project, any react native version. So all this stuff like this uh, diff between zero point, I don't know what the version was on this website, it's already uh, covered by the migration scripts? Uh, yeah, so we okay. use this uh, RNT Perch uh, project under the hood, uh, and this is also the same tool that the website is using, but sometimes we just cannot do everything uh, automatically. It's gonna, um, it's gonna cause conflicts, that's obvious, but sometimes, uh, Git just bails out on applying the patch. Uh, so uh, we detect this uh, with this latest update from today. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, we try to make it as, um, as descriptive for you what we try to apply, what, uh, what happened, uh, what we uh, excluded, what we excluded because it failed. And uh, we tell you to use this upgrade helper uh, to see what's, uh, what's there that could cause the, um, the problems. So, so we try to apply as many stuff automatically, and then point out to the, um, you know, to the migration uh, tool. 
So if I upgrade, I don't know, like three minor versions, it will be like step by step, or uh, no, it's a it's a it's a direct dev. So we can upgrade. It's a you can upgrade for, from version two, uh, 020 to 060. Uh, we've seen uh, folks doing that uh, with some success. <laughs> so so yeah, it's definitely possible. It's uh, because this. Um, this R and Dave Perch uh, project it stores the diff between every version possible from 24, I guess, or, or 23. So, so yeah, it's it's a direct direct diff between those versions. It's not doing like incremental tries to upgrade one by one because it doesn't make sense it's too slow, uh, it, and it it also doesn't make uh, upgrading any easier. We just do that's cool thank you and the second question is about do you plan to like help or recover some good written libraries so you can take care of them and for example some of them are not main maintained uh, as it should be but they are good so uh, how about them yeah so um, uh, we we already do that and uh, so we uh, we are encouraging some of the uh, developers and maintainers to uh, thank you uh, to uh, move the packages to the community uh, where uh, to the React Native community organizations uh, where they uh, where we try to find proper maintainers uh, and, and contributors to the project. So recently uh, there were uh, two projects like this: React Native Video and React Native Audio, I guess, uh, and they were moved to the uh, community because they are they have so much problems with uh, with maintenance uh, or actually lack of it uh, and uh, and once they migrate it uh, we have a special channel uh, on discord for for contrib contributors uh, maybe maybe I'll just uh, sorry about that um, I know it's it just ended okay uh, I was recording stuff so uh, back to the to the screen yeah um, so, so it's already happening. Uh, we try to also come up with some uh, ways to, um, to 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 sustain the um, the open source uh, community because it's a, it's a hard problem. It's unsolved problem yet. To how to sustain uh, open source? Uh, how to make it uh, maybe not profitable, but uh, make it not make it hard for maintainers to burn out. So, so we, we try different approaches, uh, and since we are uh, organized now, we are like a, an organization with some of the admins. Some of them are from Facebook, but most of them are not. Or most of us. Um, so, so we're working on this. So we try to find as many contributors to the projects, like give them. Um, uh, give them power to to manage the repository, like uh, because it it it, it gives you uh, a lot of nice uh, experience to um, to develop and maintain a open source package. But it also may be uh, uh, maybe not yeah uh, just just tiring. So so that's why we we need to have this kind of rotation, uh, maybe switch between projects, not burn out. Uh, that's it. And just a simple question, like the, for the purist, uh, why this R and D approach and uh, all other libraries are called with this prefix React Native? Is like uh, because called of legacy or? Uh, why are they? Can you repeat this question? Just why does diff approach library starts is prefixed with R R N? Ah, and it started as a. Um, um, as a like personal project of uh, one of, one of our colleagues, uh, and uh, it it just turned out to be a nice way to upgrade. Uh, so we put it into the community, made it better. Um, he still develops it, uh, and uh, and also from the CLI point of view or the upgrade helper, you don't know that it's R and D perch. So it's it's a transparent uh, thing. Uh, so yeah, it it just started as a non-community packages package. There is there is a lot of uh, package in community that starts with React Native something because mostly because they're either uh, moved from somewhere else or from the core, and uh, we're in the transition. Like we when uh, when the whole community or most of the community adopts auto linking, 
it will be like this simple to switch the package name because it's only changing npm and your log file. That's it. So it's not maintained as a mono repo. So like each. Nope. Nope. So nope. It's it's like those are separate repositories in the in the community. So how do you maintain? I don't know, like configuration or tests. Yeah, we have shared configuration, shared CI uh, config, for example, uh, ESLint. Uh, we use it across the packages, um, and we try to uh, make the development environment as similar as possible uh, in every package. So it's easy, easily, uh, uh, it's easy to swap developers or just go from one repo to another. Thank you. Where's Noemi? There should be questions to Noemi as well, but I'm not sure where she is. She, she just left me here. Um, yeah, so uh, nobody, like, uh, we can also talk, uh, like, privately <laughs> uh, here, doing some, some networking. Uh, but if you, if you have any questions about uh, the community, about React Native, about mobile development and uh, stuff like that. Uh, just, just ask. Don't be shy. Uh, it's easy to say that, right? Uh, yeah, but but just don't. Okay, so I guess that's it. Uh, once again, as Michal said. Uh, if you have any questions, maybe not now, but in the future, uh, don't hesitate to ask us. We are on uh, Facebook. You can jump into the React Native community group on Facebook. You can try to catch us as a call stack engineers on Facebook. Uh, we have a Discord channel with an open source, so I encourage you to like jump in in the React Native world, uh, maybe become a contributor to our open source, pro open source project. It's not so hard, believe me. I've done it once or twice, so everybody can do it. Uh, so once again, thank you for at your attendance, and hopefully see you soon uh, on the second meetup. <laughs>